Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. Welcome to part one of my little two-part series on sewing party wear. So I'm hoping to give you some nice inspiration for things that you can sew that are a bit more fancier and yeah, just a bit more glam if you've got any, any events or anything coming up in the run up to Christmas time. Um, I have to admit that as a complete workaholic and a mother of a two year old I don't really have the need that often to wear something fancy but at Christmas time we usually have a few different events in the shop and then on Christmas day me and my family always like to dress up in really fancy clothes so I know that it's like one time of the year that I am actually going to be able to wear something a bit fancier um, and it's a nice change to sew with something a different kind of fabric as well rather than just make another jumper or shirt or whatever so the first outfit that I wanted to show you today is the top that I'm wearing just now which is very sparkly and sequins as you can see and then I have paired it with a skirt as well so I'm going to talk to you about the top first of all so this is our rose gold glitter sequins and the sequins that are on the fabric are those really really fine little ones which are, catch the light beautifully but the added thing with this one which is a little bit different to the sequins that we've had in the past in the shop if you've ever had sequins from us before um, is that these sequins also have glitter on them as well so it makes them extra sparkly and shiny and we've got the glitter sequence in three colors so there's also a champagne gold and a black and then this rose gold one that I'm wearing and then we do also have just the regular little mini sequins and um, we've got that in a navy color this year and a copper and an antique silver so it's quite a gray sort of silver color they're all really really nice and um, all of these fabrics come on a kind of mesh background so they feel kind of quite lightweight and um, but when you're working with them I usually tend to just treat them like a regular woven fabric you know they do have given stretch in them but I wouldn't really class them as a stretchy fabric in that sense and um, so it's nice to just make a really simple garment with them like the one that I'm wearing so this is the green line scout t-shirt and what I've done is actually shortened the length of it by about four and a half inches so it just makes it a little bit more cropped and then I thought that it'd be really nice to wear that you'd either wear it with like high-waisted jeans um, or smart trousers or with a high-waisted skirt but the pattern does if you've not seen or used this pattern before the pattern does come up longer so you would just kind of have that choice and um, the sleeves have also ended up a little bit different on my version because the edge of the sequin fabric that I used kind of had like a little sort of scalloped edge and I decided to just incorporate that into the sleeve when I was cutting it out so it just meant that the shape of the sleeve came up a little bit straighter normally it kind of comes up a little bit higher just at that point there but it just sort of straightened it out so that's why the sleeves might look a little bit longer than what they normally do on this pattern so when you come to actually sew with the sequins I've got a separate video that is specifically about sewing with sequins but put simply don't be scared of it it's actually really really easy just so just try to treat it as much as you would treat any other normal fabric you know the chance of a needle breaking is a little bit higher but you know just be prepared for that and you'll be fine make sure it's a nice sharp needle um, and this also this kind of fabric also needs lined as well but again don't be put off by the fact it needs lined it's actually quite simple to line it all you have to do is basically make two tops one in the sequin and one in the lining fabric so i used some of our plain viscose fabric in the pink colorway and that's because i thought it looked it really brought out the tone of the fabric well and uh, because the sequins are on a mesh depending on what fabric is at the back of it, it can bring out different emphasis of color so that's why i chose our pink one so you just make the top with the pink one as well and then what i did which you might have heard me talk about before if you're a regular viewer of my videos is that i put the prim forming tape interfacing around the neckline of the sequins and around the neckline of the lining as well and this stuff is like woven 
iron on interfacing but it's cut on the bias so it curves around the neckline really easily and then it's got a stitch a chain stitch stitched through it which effectively replaces the stay stitching step of the pattern and it helps to really stabilize the neckline and stop it stretching out so I put that as soon as I cut my pieces out I put that on you can press the sequence as well just be just turn the iron cooler and if it, the forming tape interfacing isn't sticking just turn the heat of the iron up little by little until you get it to stick but it is fine to apply some light pressure and to iron that on so iron it on and then once you've made the two separate tops then you just sew them together at the neckline with the right sides facing just trim them back a little bit you might want to put some notches in it and then I actually managed to totally fine just like you normally would I understitched the neckline as well so that's when I stitched on the lining fabric but I stitched to the seam allowance and it helps the lining just to stay on the inside of the garment and it was you know it was totally totally fine to do that the only area where you might get a little bit of issues is where the seam allowances are at the neckline just because there's more layers of sequins all at that point because you've got the seam allowance of the shoulder seam too so what you can do at that point is when you come to as you're stitching round just use the hand wheel to manually turn it and you'll immediately feel when there's a little bit more resistance as you're turning that hand wheel and just kind of wiggle the fabric around a little bit and you'll find the needle goes in so it might just be that there's like a little section that you just manually do the stitches by turning the hand wheel it gives you more control and then it just means that you're less likely to break your needle so you can try that at that point and then in terms for the in term of the hems so the hem of the lining i just did like did a double turn and stitched it so i did that on the sleeves and on the bottom as well and i made it a little bit shorter just so the lining wouldn't hang down and then on my sleeves because i used that scallop edge of the sequins i just cut it to that so that's literally just a cut edge there's no turn back on that at all and then what I decided to do at the bottom hem was to put bias binding on it. In the past, I have just folded it back and then I've done a hand stitch, just a catch stitch, just to hold the hem in place. But what I decided to do with this one, just for a little bit of a change, was to put the bias binding on instead. So I just opened out the folds of the bias binding, stitched along the crease line with the right sides together and then just folded it all to the inside and then I hand stitched it, hand stitched it to finish it. So it was machine first and then folded to the insides and then hand stitched. And the added benefit of doing that is that if the hem does happen to then end up touching your skin or touching your clothes, the sequins aren't getting rubbed because you've got the nice smooth bias binding on the inside. Um, so that's a sort of added thing that you might want to consider doing. And then the skirt that I made to go with this top is it is made with this really cool fabric that we've got this year. It's X Designer and it's ple it comes pre pleated and it's called Plissé. I don't know if I'm saying that right because I've never heard anybody say it out loud before. It's spelled P L I S S E. Um, and it just means when the fab, I think it, at a high temperature, the fabric just gets sort of set in pleats. So it comes already pleated. You can't iron them out. They don't wash out either. Like they're just fixed in that position. And it's got a really cool sort of silvery sheen on it as well. So it's quite glittery and kind of sparkly too. And I just kind of copped out on this and made like a really, really simple skirt, which is basically a tube with an elastic casing at the top. You could, you could just use it with like a fuller skirt that has got a waistband or you could get if you had got had some fancy elastic you can make like an elasticated waistband in that way but I just did like a really easy channel at the top so it's basically like a, a rectangle with the top folded over to make a casing for the elastic you don't even need to hem this fabric the the density of the fibers that are woven it is so high that it just doesn't fray so you can literally cut it and I promise you nothing happens to it it just stays where you've cut it and yeah I think it's a really really cool fabric to work with it does almost feel like it's quite stretchy but that's just because the pleats come out but when you come to sew it and when you cut it out as well just try to keep it in its relaxed state as possible which will be it pleated so yeah don't don't sort of pull the pleats out or like try to flatten them when you sew just kind of keep it nice and relaxed and because the pleats are so narrow and fine and they're quite random orientation as well as in they're not like specifically uniform pleats 
and because they're narrow you don't really need to worry about where they are just almost try to ignore them as much as you can and just kind of pin and sew as you normally would um, so you could wear either of these garments with other things as well as I was saying before the top would be cool with just some nice nice trousers or some nice jeans or you could have the, the skirt with a little camisole I have actually also used that pleated fabric to make a jumpsuit too and um, so you could you could do something like that with it as well but yeah they're both really cool fabrics and nice and sparkly as well of course you can get both the fabrics on my website and I'll put a link to the blog post in the description below which will link to just some more pictures of my outfit and then where you can get the fabrics too and as I mentioned before they come in different the sequins come in different colors which is really fun and I shall be back next week with another glittery sparkly inspiration idea for you and um, so just remember if you haven't subscribed already to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that next video and thanks for watching guys I'll see you next time bye